Okay, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, people who want to learn something, we're going to have us a little lecture. So, this was initiated by a post on Instagram. I'm going to read it to you. Let me pull it up here. And, uh, let's see, the gentleman's name, he goes under as, uh, Kozvar, C-O-Z-V-A-R-R, -R. and uh, he tells me he's been working out uh, since he was six in the gym, and this was his latest posting. He says, uh, marijuana is great for appetite. Some people get the munchies from it. I never did. Um, getting the munchies is a real bad way of how you feed your body when you're trying to work out but whatever and uh, and he says and promoting cell repair and growth um, marijuana goes back in medicinal literature for 5,000 fucking years and I've never found anything of any reference of any type that I can substantiate besides a 420 newsletter Okay, we're talking about back in writings, so you can document what they're saying from another source. Um, that says anything about promoting cellular growth and repair. There's a lot of stuff that does. A lot of herbs that do. I'm, I'm really herb, herb, herbally knowledgeable about how to heal the body. I only went to prison for doing that, you know. Watch the Todd imprisonment video. <laughs> I'm really good at it. And marijuana is not something we used. If it worked, we'd have been using it. A lot of herbs that you, that you can use that work really well. That's not one of them. Avocados, uh, he says, science, my man. Uh, no, it ain't. Marijuana is a very good herb to get rid of very bad symptoms of other diseases. Yes, it does. It has been known in scientific literature throughout writings for thousands of years, 5,000 freaking years in various cultures around the world that marijuana does this. Yes, absolutely. Cellular growth and repair, no, that's not what it does. Avocados are amazing. Okay, well, you got that right. Superfood, yes, it is. Then he says, dietary protein is undigestible. Really? Or, excuse me, dairy protein is undigestible. Really? Dairy protein. Um, well, let's qualify that. What dairy is, people often think of as cow's milk. Dairy is milk, period, from any source, including mama's milk you feed your babies. And there have been many cultures around the world who have breastfed their children up to 10 years old. That's a normal thing. The calcium in dairy also leaches calcium from your body. Total falsehood. Also science, he says. Absolutely not true. These are not opinions, my brother. I just try to spread the word. This is why we're making this video, because he's spreading false words. I, and I, 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 no, not, not on my watch. These are not mainstream media ideas. The media makes people like me look crazy, which is fine. I'm down with you eating meat and dairy, but your knowledge is outdated. Um, no. That's all I'm saying. Use the interweb and just Google one fact I have stated. Look at multiple nonprofit studies. That's all, man. Give your body what it really needs and see what you're capable of. And then he, tes then he goes on and says, testosterone loss is false science. Sorry, buddy. I got testosterone loss in my own body. Let me tell you what happens to a man or a woman when they have testosterone loss. Your sex organs atrophy. Your balls shrink, your dick shrinks, your clitoris shrinks, your vaginal walls shrink and contract. And in a woman's case, she doesn't lubricate as much, and she, neither one of you get as sexually aroused as intense or as easily, and it doesn't last as long. He's 30 years old, I think he said he was, or 32. Tell me that when you're 45, pal. You'll be a real believer. It happens to everybody. It's called age. You want to speed it up? Get castrated. Happen that fast. You want to slow it down but speed it up a little bit? Get a vasectomy. 
Get your tubes tight. Your testosterone goes real fast. In some cases, ceases to be produced in the body. No cell. No cell. I got a vasectomy at 27. Instant went from fucking chicks every different night. Hump, hump, hump. Did you get the parts today? Oh, no, but I got fucked. I thought it was a good thing because my dick was like sniff, 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 chase tail instead of chase business because the testosterone was shooting through the rope because I was a young man. This is how young guys with high testosterone are. That's the reality of it. Now, I'm an older guy. I'm 53. You know what's happened? Between a vasectomy of 27 and now, two inches have gone off because it don't get so hard anymore because of testosterone loss. And any man tells you that ain't the reality, he just lied to you. Okay? That's a real ego trip for a guy the size of his wang. Let me give you another real. It ain't the size of your joint. It's what you do with it. Okay? If you don't know how to work it, it don't matter if you got a foot long, pal. You're a lip dick in the bed. It ain't the size at all. So, now we're going to give you some other history here. So, <clears throat> he says, uh, <laughs> laughably, uh, dietary protein can't be digested. Well, there are some people who are lactose intolerant. We're going to read that right now. Lactose intolerance is the inability of adults and children to digest lactose, a sugar found in milk, and to a lesser extent dairy products. Causing side effects is due to a lactase deficiency or hypolactasia. In some rare cases, babies have congenital lactase deficiency, which prevents them from being able to digest even human milk. Lactose intolerance individuals have insufficient levels of lactase, an enzyme that catalyzes the hydrolysis of lactose into glucose and galactose. Glucose and galactose, this is what your body feeds on. Got it? In their digestive system. In most cases, this causes symptoms which may include abdominal bloating and cramps, flatulence, diarrhea, nausea, borygamy, a uh, rumbling stomach, or vomiting after consuming significant amounts of lactose. It is common for patients with inflammatory bowel disease, which I have, uh, and been able to contain just fine with more fiber. Uh, to experience gastrointestinal symptoms after lactose ingestion, although the prevalence of lactase deficiency in this population has not been well studied. Most mammals normally cease to produce lactase, becoming lactose intolerant after weaning, but some human populations have developed lactase persistence in which lactase production continues into adulthood, which likely developed as a response to growing benefits of being able to digest the milk of farm animals such as cattle not limited to cattle research reveals intolerance to be more common globally than lactase persistence and that the variation has been tied to genetics called your DNA but that the largest source of variation has been shown to be based upon exposure e.g. cultures that consume dairy. However, it is not clear whether digestion needs to be complete to avoid system, symptoms. The frequency of lactose intolerance ranges from 5% in the Northern European to more than 90% in some African and Asian co countries. Some have argued that this links intolerance to natural selection favoring lactose persistent individuals, but it is also consistent with the psychological response to decreased lactose production when it's not needed in cultures in which dairy products are not an available food source. But this highly confounded by the fact that polymorphisms are associated with natural non-selective variation in the human genome. In other words, DNA can be recessive. You know, your aunts, your brothers, your sisters, they may all be white with blue eyes, and you come out with red hair and green eyes. And everybody's like, what's up with that? Who's daddy? Because mommy, 20 generations ago, was actually Irish. Okay? Or pops out as a black guy. Ever hear of Dinah Shore? She had a black baby. Disavowed it. It can be recessive for many generations. In any way, shape, or form. And that is a scientific fact. Look it up. <clears throat> Uh, but children who immigrate into dairy-rich environments 
tend to consume dairy products at a rate that is close to that of population's average. Although populations in Europe, India, Arabia, and Africa were first thought to have high frequencies of lactase persistence because of a single mutation, lactase persistence has been traced to a number of mutations that occurred independently. It is important to recognize that the genetic definition of lactose intolerance is not the same as an operative one in which one experiences symptoms. <clears throat> Okay, if you're lactose intolerant, get you an en enzyme. You can have dairy all you want. You have to have, if you want to increase your muscle mass, you have to have some form of long-term burning protein before bed. This can be in a protein powder with just casein and whey in it. Okay, casein is a long-term bro uh, burning protein. You've got to have that before bed. The very best thing that you can eat before bed is either a yogurt or a cottage cheese. If for some reason you're unwilling or unable to afford a lactose uh, enzyme because you are lactose intolerant, that means you get to spend more money because protein powders really cost you. You follow me? <laughs> it's, you just spent more money because you don't want to go buy a little stupid enzyme so you can digest the good stuff. That's your reality. So, <clears throat> now let's talk about milk. As you know, milk is a white liquid. Everybody knows that. Produced by the mammary glands, the breastuses of mammals. That's what makes you a mammal. Any and every mammal produces milk. And any and every mammal that has been domesticated by man through tens of thousands of years, from horses to goats to sheep to cows to llamas to reindeer, we've eaten. And very healthily. So anybody's going to tell you that milk ain't good for you, when you need to suck it out of your mommy's titties, just lied to you in your face. I don't care what kind of scientific bullshit they're, they're spouting at you. The reality is all around you. Everyday reality, you don't need a scientist to tell you that, man. Just look around you and educate yourself about different cultures in the world and the history of cultures. And it's right there. That's as simple as that. This is stupid ass important. Early lactation milk contains colostrum across the spectrum of every mammal in existence, including mama, which carries the mother's antibodies for its young and can reduce the risk of many diseases. Breastfeeding is normal and natural and stupid ass important. Milk contains many other nutrients and the carbohydrate lactose. As an agricultural product, milk is extracted from mammals during or soon after pregnancy and is used as food for humans. Worldwide, dairy farms produced about 730 million tons of milk in 2011 from 260 million dairy cows. If people were digesting that, then people would be out of business. India is the world's largest producer of milk and the leading exporter of skim milk powder, yet has little or no other milk product exports. This ever-increasing rise in domestic demand for dairy products and a large demand supply gap could lead to India being a net importer of dairy products in the future. New Zealand, the European Union's 28 member states, Australia and the United States are the world's largest exporters of milk and milk products. China and Russia are the world's largest importers of milk and milk products. Throughout the world, there are more than 6 billion consumers of milk and milk products. There's only 7 billion people here. So that means six out of 10, but we don't have 10 billion. Let's do the math here, roughly in my head. That means uh, eight out of 10 people need milk, like milk, eat it every day. I guess milk's healthy. Wow, science. So you can kiss off that little suedo science out of his list. So, <clears throat> Let's continue here. Now, we looked up uh, marijuana use. 
The earliest described uh, Chinese medicinal reference was a uh, date from 2737 BC. Spread from China to India, then to North Africa, reached Europe as early as AD 500. Uh, that's prior to the Roman Empire. You follow? So Greece was still happening. Those dates are really important. So people didn't use them weed before it hit literature. And I've researched and researched and researched and I've never ever found any collaborating evidence from any other documentation that marijuana is a cellular growth medicinal plant. It is extremely potent for counteracting the symptoms of various maladies. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it should be absolutely legal, in my opinion. Growing, smoking, whatever. If, if you can drink alcohol, you better legalize that. That's fucking dumbass stupid. All you're doing is throwing people under the bus and letting all the drug cartels make a lot of money. So, we shall continue. Here, let me pull up another one. Let's see, some more incidences of uh, milk. Whether some cows, goats, sheep, camels, yak, water buffalo, horses, donkeys, or even reindeer, unheated, unprocessed milk has been a safe, reliable food source for a good long time. Even in the tropics and centuries before refrigeration had been invented, raw milk was an important food source for many cultures. By exploiting the preservation benefits of fermentation, primitive peoples were able to take a great food and make it even better. Well, guess what? If you go to a primitive society that doesn't have refrigeration, the majority of the food's fermented, not just the milk. That's a fact. So, let's look at cottage cheese. Four ounce serving of 4% fat product has about 120 calories, five grams of fat. Now it's a healthy fat. You want, you need healthy fat on a ketosis diet. You need healthy fat if you're going to be a bodybuilder. You've got to have it. You've got to have it. it. Lubricates everything. You've got to have it. It's not a meat. Three grams of carbohydrates and 12 grams of protein. It also contains about 500 milligrams of sodium, which is fine. You've got to have some salt in your diet. When you're sweating, you'll die without. 70 milligrams of calcium and 20 milligrams of cholesterol. Again, it's a healthy fat that's good cholesterol. Healthy fats have good cholesterol. Always, always, always. So, <clears throat> cottage cheese is popular among dieters and some health food devotees. It is a favorite food among bodybuilders, runners, and weightlifters for its high content of casein protein, a longer lasting protein while being relatively low in fat, pregnant women are advised that cottage cheese is safe to eat during pre their pregnancy, whereas some cheese products are not. They actually have, you know, mold. So, here's the dietary. We have 3.38 grams of carbohydrates, 2.67 grams of sugars. And again, it's a good sugar. It's a milk sugar. It's not refined sugar. 4.30 grams of fat. Protein is 11.12 grams. Vitamins. Vitamin A equivalent is 37. UG is 5%. Beta carotene. That's it for your eyes. Uh, it's 12 UG. Uh, minerals. Calcium is 83 milligrams. It's 8%. Iron is 0 0.07 milligrams. 1%. Magnesium, 8 milligrams. 2%. Phosphorus, 159 milligrams. is 23%. Phosphorus is one of the essential things that you need to make your muscles work. Potassium is another thing that you've got to have to make your muscles work. That's why I'm eating those rotten bananas. One of the reasons. 104 milligrams, 2%. Sodium, which you gotta have. I don't put salt on my food. Gotta have some. 364 milligrams, 24%. And zinc, which is essentially, it's actually proven to help heal the body, unlike marijuana, is uh, 0.4 milligrams, 4%. I always have a cottage cheese meal before bed. It, it's very important if you wanna build up. 50% of what you do in the yard, in the gym, in your little home workout station, 
at the beach, wherever you're doing your exercises, 50% minimum is your diet. You better eat right, and you better be putting good protein in your body. You ain't gonna get anywhere. Now, let's go to cultural peoples. Let's talk about the Mazai. The Mazai are a Neolithic group. They inhabit the African Great, the Great Lakes region. They speak Neo-Saharan language and came to Southeast Africa by way of South Sudan. Most Neolithes in the area, including the Mazai, the Samburu, and the Kalejin, are pastoralists and are famous for their fearsome reputations as warriors and cattle rustlers. As with the Bantu, the Mazai, and other Neolithes in Eastern Africa have adopted many customs and practices from their ne neighboring Kashitic groups, including the HZ system, the social organization, circumcision, both male and female circumcision here, the vocabulary terms. Origin, migration, and assimilation. According to their own oral history, the Mazai or originated in the lower Nile Valley, north of Lake Turkana, northwest Kenya, and began migrating south around the 15th century, arriving a long trunk of land stretching from what is now northern Kenya to what is now central Tanzania between the 17th and 18th century. Many ethnic groups that already formed settlements in the region were forcibly displaced by the incoming Mazai. They're great warriors, really tall people, really strong. While other mainly southern Cushitic groups were assimilated into Mazai society. They got history. They've been around. And they survived. This is important. Because their diet traditionally consisted of raw meat, raw milk, and raw blood from cattle, supplemented by a little bit of herbs, you know, tubers that they dig out of the ground, that they pick along the way. In sub-Saharan Africa, there's not too much of it. Now, in the summer of 1935, Dr. Weston A. Price visited the Mazai and reported that according to Dr. Anderson, the local government hospital in Kenya, most tribes were disease-free. Many had not a single tooth attacked by dental caries, that's cavities, or nor a single malformed dental arch, you know, like cleft palate. Not one, not one. Particularly the Mazai had a very low 0.4% of bone caries, no bone, bone deformation anywhere. It's called calcium, absorbed from the milk, he attributed that to the diet consisting of, in order of volume, raw milk, raw blood, raw meat, and some vegetables and fruits, although in many villages they didn't eat any fruit or vegetables at all. He noted that when available, every growing child and every pregnant or lactated woman would receive a daily ration of raw blood. Dr. Weston A. a. Price also noted the government efforts back in 1935 to turn the Mazai into farmers. An ILCA study, Nestle 1989 states, today the staple diet of the Mazai consists of cow's milk and maize meal. The former is a largely drunk, fresh, and, or in sweet tea, and letters used to make a liquid or solid porridge. The solid porridge is known as yugali and is eaten with milk. Unlike the liquid porridge, yugali is not prepared with milk. Animal fats are butter and used in cooking, primarily porridge, maize, and beans. Butter is also an important infant food. Got that? Butter is good for you. Butter is an important infant food to these people. You can eat it by the cupful. Won't hurt you. It's good, healthy fat, man. That's the reality of it. Eat margin, you're going to die an early death. But our corporate entities wanted to poison us. You gotta remember, there's a lot of money in making people sick in this country. And so in a massive campaign of how bad butter was, but, but uh, you gotta eat our margarine, it's good shit. They've been doing that stuff since the 50s. Studies by the International Livestock Center for Africa, Procure et al. 1991, show a very great change in the diet of the Mazai towards non-livestock products with maize comprising 12 to 39 percent and sugars at 8 to 13 percent. About one liter of milk is consumed per person daily. Most of the milk is consumed as fermented milk or buttermilk, but a byproduct of butter making. Milk consumption figures are very high by any standards. The needs for protein and essential amino acids are more than adequately satisfied. However, the supply of iron, niacin, vitamin C, vitamin A, thiamine, and energy are never fully met by a purely milk diet. Due to changing circumstances, especially the seasonal nature of milk supply and frequent droughts, most pastoralists, including the Mazai, now include substantial milk of grain in their diets. Uh, how do we explain that? It's called drought. The cows die. Not enough cows, can't get enough blood. What do we do? we got to eat something. 
Grains are there to keep the population up. That's all it is. The warlords need people to die for them and keep them in power. They need population. Feed them rice, feed them corn, feed them wheat. Good for the population. The elite wants them to stay healthy. They eat meat. They eat milk. They stay healthy. Meat costs money. Corn's cheap. The Mazai herd goats and sheep, including the red Mazai sheep, as well as more prized cattle. Electrocardiogram test applied to 400 young adult male Mazai found no evidence whatsoever of heart disease, abnormalities, or malfunction. Further, further study with carbon-14 tracers showed that the average cholesterol level was about 50% that of an average American. These findings were ascribed to Amazing Fitness of Morans, which was evaluated as Olympic standard. These boys are fit. You can't get fit if you eat junk stuff. Don't happen. Your bones don't heal right. Your muscles don't heal right. You go on a massive protein diet, and your body's going to heal. You want to be a bodybuilder, you better start putting animal protein in you. A vegetarian ain't going to happen, pal. It just ain't. I've been around enough, I've seen enough people, and it don't work. It just don't work. You're deluding yourself. Soups are probably the most important use of plant food for Maasai. Acacia nilotica is the most frequently used soup plant. The root or stem bark is boiled in water and the decoction is drunk alone or added to soup. The Maasai are fond of taking this as a drug and it's known to make them energetic, aggressive, and fearless. Maasai eat soup laced with bitter bark and roots containing cholesterol lowering saponins. Those urban Maasai who don't have access to the bitter plants tend to develop heart disease. Gotta remember, they're also eating sugars. They're changing their diet. Look what happened to the Native Americans. They all got diabetes and got fat. They weren't like that. They weren't like that, man. The Native Americans, in their day, they were protein-eating powerhouses, and they were strong. They were massively strong. I've never seen tribal peoples that weren't massively strong, stringy, just like, man, boom. Their muscles are like knotted cords. All they do is work out all day chasing food. You know? That's what they do. And they're eating high-protein diets. And it heals your body. That's just the reality of it. So, it's all really, really available with real history on the internet. What you gotta do is look up the history of peoples, the histories of cultures, okay, which is what I'm reading from on the computer, and stay out of the populist scientific bullshit of people trying to push their own little theory on stuff. So, it's no, never been more easier to actually educate yourself. But you gotta get through all the pseudo scientific stuff and stay with the real scientific papers that you can read back, and this was done at this time, and that was done at this time, and this was done at that time. You know, they've had science for a while now. You know, anybody remember Newton? So that's that. That's this little lecture for tonight. And um, if you want to be a bodybuilder, you want to heal your body, you need protein. Watch my raw egg video. It's essential, man. It's not a maybe. It's not a myth. It's not a game. So as I, as I told uh, our, our guy, I says, don't let a 50-year-old man pass you up. I'll be right there. Zing right by him. See you guys.